Hello again, it's Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this little mini series of videos about specialist flue systems. First flue system we're going to be looking at is the Vertex flue or the Silver flue, so let's get on with it. Now then, what's special about this Vertex or Silver flue system? Well basically, it is a room sealed appliance, fan assisted, that takes its air from combustion from within the loft space or the roof space. So the roof space has to be ventilated to allow for this combustion air. So it takes its combustion air from the roof space like we just said. The boiler is sealed to the room. So the boiler is also fan assisted. But the secondary flue is classed basically like an open flue appliance. And this secondary flue you'll need to do a flue flow test and spillage at the draft diverter. So let's look closely at it then. So there's our appliance. So this is your room sealed appliance. So this could be installed in any room downstairs and it does not need ventilation in that room. As the primary flue comes up, when it passes through the ceiling, it will need fire stops top and bottom. This little red wiggly line we've got here is the loft insulation. And this, is the vertex or silver flue system. Now the bit at the bottom here is where the air supply comes in for combustion. So this is like your standard twin pipe system what you would normally fit on a boiler. So you've got the air on the outside and the products of combustion coming up through the inside. So this air supply has to be more than 300 from the bottom of the air supply to the top of the insulation, you need more than 300. But the draft diverter, which is this bit here on the top, has to be more than 400 mil off the top of this insulation. Two of the major things you need to look at. Now, because this secondary flue system is like an open fluid appliance, we need a minimum rise above the draft diverter of 600 before any bends. And again, 45 degrees, no more than 45 degrees. But this distance here between the two flue systems cannot be more than 20% of the total length of this secondary flue system. And this flue system could actually just go straight up through the roof and terminate with a normal terminal, or we can go to a rich terminal. So that's the basic requirements we require for this Vertex or Solver flue system. Now, the way we classify flue systems these days comes under SEN EN1749, which is a classification of gas appliances according to their method of supply of combustion air and the evacuation of the combustion products. So what they've done is they've given us this table on how to classify these different flue systems. Now from this table you can see the vertex flues come under C72 and C73. So the C stands for a room sealed appliance. The 7 stands for a vertical flue to outside air with its air supply duct in the loft and the draft diverter in the loft above the air inlet. The 1 stands for a natural draft appliance. The 2 stands for a fan downstream of the heat exchanger and a C73 is a fan upstream of the heat exchanger. So that's how we classify these vertex flues as the appliance required to be a C72 and a C73. So that's the vertex or solar flue system. Let's have a look at some others. Now the next specialist flue systems we're going to look at are u ducts or SE ducts. Some people call them sea ducts. But anyway, let's have a look. First thing we see, we can't class these as a shared or communal flue system, or a CFS. Now, these are only gonna be found in high-rise buildings, and you can only connect room sealed appliances to them, which are specially approved. So they would be C2 or C4 appliances. So if we go back to our chart from 1749, you can see a C2 appliance is an inlet and outlet ducts connected to a common duct system for multi-appliance connections. 
which is an SE duct or a U duct. And you can see the C4 appliance is inlet and outlet appliance connection ducts connected to a U-shaped duct for multi-appliance systems. So let's take this U duct first. Under U duct, it would have the vent on top of the block of flats and it would bring fresh air down to the bottom and start to bring it back up to the top. These aren't fan assisted or anything like this, this is all natural. Now then, the appliances, like I say, would be room sealed appliances and it would draw its air from combustion from this left hand side of the shaft. But what's the major problem you see with this? Well basically, this appliance here would get a lot of oxygen, but this appliance here wouldn't be getting a lot of oxygen, would it? Because it would be drawing in a lot of the products of combustion. But the main thing for these is they are sized for the appliances what are being installed on them. So if these were 10 kilowatt boilers, you couldn't go and put on a 24 kilowatt boiler because it has to be the same kilowatts when you're replacing the appliance. So that's the U duct. Now, if we look at the SE duct, and it's called an SE duct because it's from South Eastern Gas invented it. Obviously, this is a U duct because it's in a U shape. You can see here the air is drawn from ground level. The problem we had with these was, because I have actually worked on these systems when I worked at Manchester City Council, I did have the pleasure of working on these kind of systems. Is it a pleasure? Anyway. The problem we had here was they used to fill up with debris and water and leaves and stuff like that and uh, wouldn't give a, a nice clear passage for the air. So the air would be drawn down at the bottom and then would, products of combustion would come out at the top and you'd have to make sure that from the roof to the bottom of the vent there would be more than 250 mil. But the same problem with these as well. They would be ream sealed, they would be C2 or C4 appliances and the ones at the top would suffer with lack of oxygen, technically, but they did work. And I did end up putting um, combi boilers on these, Vicera boilers. They got special permission from Vicera to be able to put on this system. They did work, but you couldn't put condensing boilers on these systems for obvious reasons. You would fill this up with water, wouldn't you? But that's why we've changed our communal flu systems or our CFS systems. So let's have a closer look at them. Shall we have a look at the replacement for the U duct and the SE duct then? Well, we could have this system laid out in front of us. So these appliances could be actually in one boiler room or again, they could be on individual floors like you would get in a flat. So, CFS can be divided into three categories when they're installed in this situation. We could have an MV, which is naturally ventilated. We could have an FA, which is fan assisted. Or we can have an EO, which is exhaust only. Here I've put, these can be MV or FA for exhaust only. So you might find in something like, I don't know, a school or a big college, you could find boilers linked together, but only taking out the product of combustion. They would not be taking the air from outside, they would come in from the room. So it would be kind of like an open fluid appliance. And you would see the air section would be left open to draw the air in. And obviously it would need ventilation and you would need to check manufacturer's instructions for that. But on this system I've drawn here, we've got a fan assisted system which is basically on flue pipe like you would get for a normal boiler but the sizes would be different so you would get an 80 millimeter internal and up to 125 millimeters on the external side of the flue where the air comes in but they do say you could actually get a 60 to 100 mil one but you'd have to check manufacturer's instructions so when this flue comes back in where it's joining the appliances and you can have up to four appliances on this system, well obviously one to four on this system, we've got three, you would have to slope the flue back to allow for the condensate to drain away 
down at the bottom but you would still need to put the standard condensing drains in carrying out the manufacturer's instructions for the boilers so it could drain that way or obviously it could drain via the appliances also on this system we need a no return valve on the products of combustion and the reason why we have this non return valve is if one of these boilers is shut down for servicing you wouldn't want the products of combustion from the other two going out into the boiler while you're trying to service it you could get poisoned so that's why they require non return valves so we don't get the products of combustion coming back in obviously it could also be a problem if you were getting products of combustion getting into the air side of the flue but you should be checking your integrity anyway now and again like I say these could actually go straight up and be vertical and the appliance could go into them on individual floors like I say like you would get in a block of flats but we also need to put a notice plate then down at the bottom of the flue where the condensate line is actually explaining how many appliances we've got on the flue system and what the kilowatt rating and the manufacturer's instructions are for them. Now this time there is a slightly different chart for us to follow. So if you look on the left hand side of this chart you can see the appliance C42 or 42P. The P actually means non-return valve is fitted. Next one down is C43 or 43P, then C82 or 82P or then 83 uh, 83p so if we go back to our chart from 1749 we can see again a c4 appliance is an inlet and the outlet appliance connection ducts connected to a u-shaped duct for multi appliance systems and the c8 is a room sealed appliance with a non-balanced system which the air supply from outside and the flue into a common duct system if we go back to the chart we've just been looking at, it now tells us the suitability of whether it can go on a CFS system or not. So the C4243, yes, C8283, no, but they can go on a system with their singular appliances. Hopefully that one helps you out. So that's our shared flu system which is taken over from the SE or the U duct. Now I'm going to continue with some more of these videos but that's it for now so if you've liked this video why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. Again if you've not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos because it's anytime. All I've got left to say is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.